Today on Movie Wallace, we talk about our favourite movies of 2023. It's time for Movie Wallace. Hi, this is Joe. Hi, it's Rashmi. And yes, you as well. Movie Wallace is your favorite dose of film reviews movie news and general banter in theaters on dvd online streaming or in the back of an airplane if you love this the movies this show is for you goodness oh my gosh me. you're becoming been rusty a joe rusty you know I've, I've always been rusty but it's been like two months yeah since we last recorded yeah i Good think you grief. have a brain fungus yeah uh, clearly i did and clearly we do no practice here yeah so we're attempting to do this on camera. I'm not sure if I'll put this on YouTube or not, but I'm, but this is, let's wave to the camera, everyone. Hello. And then we will try and ignore that for the rest of the podcast. Okay. <laughs> I hate being self-conscious on a camera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is our first podcast of the year. Yay. Um, happy New Year. Happy New Year, indeed, Happy, everybody. happy New Year. It's, uh, How can it's only the second time we've seen Yazdi all year. Well, and it's the middle of January. Year, I know. Is. We're recording here on the 14th of January. This is what modern life will do it's to It's true. You. We missed you, Yazdi. I missed you guys too. I missed Movie Wallace. Yeah, me too. And the reason for I've, the hiatus. I've, I have, I've had three different people tell me, when are you guys putting up your next same, podcast? Same, same. They're like, come on, hurry yeah, up. Yeah, I know. And <laughs> we're like, sorry. Okay. We are sorry. The reason for the hiatus was, um, uh, I was in the UK for a month. Rashmi was in the UK for three weeks. Yes. Then we had the holidays. Yes. And uh, it just took a while for us to get kind ramp of up again. And we got colds. We got not and, COVID. And no, we got we got not COVID. We got not COVID, but equally uh, bad it colds. Was as bad as COVID. But I heard, yeah, not COVID is worse than COVID. The flu, whatever is going on, whatever around, it the was, cough, it's yeah. Bad. Well, I attribute it to having a five-year-old and a two-year-old, Rashmi's dear, uh, our our dear nieces, uh, daughter, two daughters. Um, climbing all over us during the Christmas week, yeah, <laughs> which is adorable and disgusting in equal amounts. Cause, yeah, because you yeah. know what two the two year old, like. the two year old was constantly snotty. Mm. Like there is constant stream of like mucus. <laughs> it's quite disgusting. <laughs> and, and they do that thing they like a, yeah, they come right at you. Yeah, <laughs> and you say yeah. that as I have something in my mouth. I know. That's okay. It's <laughs> yeah, it was quite disgusting, but it's and, so and cute. Adorable in, yeah. in equal measures. So yeah, but anyway, we did come and we were sick. So it's a good job we waited to do this. Otherwise, Joe and I would have been spluttering all over your lovely table, Yazdi. I'm actually going to do my best not to cough my way through this episode. <clears throat> all right. You were invited to eat with us. We have, look, see, now we can see <laughs> the evidence of the good snacks. Oh. We have blueberries, which are really sweet given They're the time sweet. of year. Yes. Where are they um, from? Uh, blueberries are from Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's. Uh, we have madeleines. Which are from Costco. And um, what's the flaky <laughs> thing? The, Almond Danish from Trader Joe's, which is very good, I must say. Joe hasn't mm. had any yet, it's but it's, it's really good. And we have tea and I can smell guava. Yes. I there met. is, right? There is guava. <sighs> there are many guava. Trust which are my ripening. nose, Joe. Yes. Does it, I mean, does it clearly. make you sick? Because no, I love it. I love the smell. I love the smell. Yeah, it's very strong. But it's very pungent. Yeah, it's very pungent. Can you smell the guava, Joe? No, but then my sense of smell isn't. Um, as as acutely sensitive as, yes, as yours can yes, be. Yes, it's true. <laughs> All right. Um, and we so, do have a curfew. Yeah, well, we're, it's a belly curfew. It's a belly curfew. We're <laughs> planning to have some noodles after this podcast. Yeah, no, it's not just noodles, it's dumplings. Oh. Yeah. I so Yazdi noodles. and I, we were just laughing because our Instagram to each other is 50% food and 50% movies. No, maybe like 45% and movies and 5% some other BS that and, we and, find and interesting. And what proportion of the food is dumplings? Because there's a bit of a dumpling fetish. Uh, I, I, think I'd say, I think it's 90% <laughs> yeah. of the 40%. I haven't met every no, culture. 90% of the 50% is dumplings. Every culture has a dumpling. It's like true. Thing, and they're always like, I haven't met a bad, bad dumpling in my life. I don't know. Have you? I don't mm. love the paste. The pastry ones are a little bit. You know, like a uh, something oh. filled in a piece of pastry, right? Right. No, like no, no. a handheld pie, right? right. Is not no, as no, good no. as a dumpling. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm talking about proper, but it's steamed. Something yeah. is steamed. Yes. Or fried. Yes. Anyway, we found a new place. It's called Bar Fung Dumpling. Humbug. Bar Humbug. No. Dumpling. Bar Fung. 
Bart Van Dumpling. Language. It's a new franchise. It's just going live. In San Diego. You have to write that out for me because that sounds like Barf on Dumplings. No, it's B B A F A N G. Barfung. B A F U N G. U N G. Oh. Barfung. Like Farflung, but Barfung. Dub. They need to work on the naming. I'm sure it means something appropriate. Yeah. Correct. But Barf on Dumplings is not going to appear. So that's the plan. That's the plan. Let's go Barf on Dumplings. Yeah. Well, they don't want riffraff like us showing up. Yeah. (laughs) They just want, you know. Keeping it real. Yeah. Yeah. Keeping it real. So we should get on because you know how much we can talk about movies. All right. Yes. So, um, and let's just say for the record, we had to stop Yazdi from doing his top 30. Yeah. I have top 32. (laughs) <laughs> Yazdi, that's too much. No, no, no. I have, I have top 20 and I have 12 honourable mentions. Actually, I wonder if there is a way to share our letterboxed. Yeah, because we should. Because I think, if I'll, I'll see if I can figure out posting a link to that. Okay. Or maybe you can do that on well, our... Well, my letterbox doesn't accurately for the problem that you had. So for our listeners, so, remember, we all use letterboxed. And, and you should too. And you should too, to record our instant reaction to a movie. And it doesn't always reflect what you truly like, then think. So hold on. So it's letterboxed without the e, without the e between the x and the d. Yeah. And it's an app. Yeah. Um, or a website. Um, and it's free. It's completely free. And what you do is you go in, and when you watch movies, you basically just find the name of the movie and you click it and rate it. And over time, it builds a library of what you've watched and what you thought about it. And you don't even have to write anything. You can just log it as you have seen it. Yep. And you can just give a few stars. And it's a like five-star two, rating. Right, five star. You don't have to write a word if, if you don't want to. You can write a review if you want to, but you don't have to. And it, if you watch a lot of movies, it's a great way to keep track of everything you watched in the year. It's, it's literally what thing. I'm using today because yep. um, I came horribly unprepared into this podcast. I know the two of you did your homework. I did not do mine. Uh, always, yeah, always, Jen. Uh, I'm sorry. I, look, I, I do my work after the podcast is recorded. That's okay? true. That's so true. That, that's when I kind that's of true. get the brain into gear. Can't complain too much, Yazdi. But it had a list of all the movies that I had, and all I had to do is click on, um, list them in my order of rating. So yeah. it kind of came up with a list. I had to cheat a little bit, and I'll explain why when we talk okay. about things. But um, for, for the most part, it was really helpful. Okay. So, letterboxed.com or letterboxed <laughs> app. And it's really good because I can see, for example, that I watched 120 <coughs> movies last year. Wow. I don't That's know how many more, I watched. More than, two, more than two a week, which That's is not a lot, lot mo- well. in the scheme of things. But how yeah. do you figure that out, Yazdi? So if I go if to my list. Go to your list and at the top it will say how many there are. No lists. Diary. Yes. No, go to lists. No, if you... Okay, well, Rashmi, we'll show you after the show. All right, we'll we'll figure it out. (laughs) This is not very compelling podcasting. No, it's not. (gasps) So I know... Rashmi tech support on her app. Yes. (laughs) Yes. But my fear was, you know, through most of the year, was that we have the the writer strike, the SAG writer strike, and then the SAG actor strike, which prevented a lot of movies from getting released this year, especially as the strike you know, dragged on into September and October, the feeling was all the, you know, the prized movies, the the high prestige movies would not get released. And I was really worried that we may not have much to choose from this year. Mm-hmm. And then finally the strike ended. A lot of those movies did get released. And I was, I'm very happy with the state of cinema in 2023. You know, it's funny. We always, you know, do that retrospective and there's good years and bad years. And um, I'm surprised at how many, Entries. I mean, I don't have a top 34, Yasdi, um, but I do have, <laughs> you know, a top 20 or so that represent excellence yeah. um, as far as um, uh, entertainment wise. And I have to admit, I was not very able to keep up with the, the all of the screeners and all of the things that I know the two of you watched for your um, film critic duties as part mm-hmm. of your membership of San Diego Film Critics Society. Yep. So a lot of the things that I know will be high up in your list. Yeah. I, I didn't even get You just get didn't get to. a chance. Yeah. 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 Fair enough. All right. Let's, let's <coughs> jump in. Yep. Um, so I guess how are we going to do this? Should so let's just, go like, Joe, Yazdi, Rashmi, then Rashmi, Yazdi, Joe, and then Yazdi, Joe, Rashmi will... Let's go like this. I have no idea. Okay, I'll just, I'll, I think we should keep the same yeah, order. Okay. So we'll go Joe, Yazdi, Rashmi. And then again, Jorah. And well. then, okay, okay. Are you okay with that? I'm fine with yes, that, but okay. how can I get first bite at the cherry? Because I know yours are going to be... 
Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was going like, oh, to. Yeah. Was gonna, yeah. <laughs> no. Go ahead, Joe. All right. Um, <clears throat> at number ten. And obviously there will and, be some and overlaps, and uh, yeah, and we'll then we'll just declare so where they are. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk before I do my number ten. I'm gonna talk about the cheating that I just had to do because okay. there are a couple of movies that were in my top ten list as ordered by Letterboxd, um, which I'm really disappointed I can't include in my top ten, but they're very highly rated by me nonetheless. So I'm um, talking specifically about Guardians of the Galaxy. Volume mm. three. Why can't you include it? I'll tell you why. Oh. Um, because there are other movies that I think that warrant. Ah, uh, I the, see. The, okay. So Letterbox sometimes captures my impression as I came out of the movie. I see. And some movies um, take a while to kind of percolate. Mm-hmm. I see. Even though I rate them as Plus, I go along. Plus, what happens if you have ten that are four and a half stars? Correct. But, right. But, so then but, you have to choose. And, and that may okay. have been the case here, but I think part, partly what happens here is that, you know, you have a feeling when you leave a movie and then you noodle over it and you, you put it in the context of other things that you've seen. And so things kind of jiggle around. So, um, But I think that should happen because your, your opinion, as soon as you watch the movie, will necessarily, for some movies, be different than what it is a week later. And I like exactly. that. Yeah. Exactly. So, <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of cheating here. Um, but if I was to really give you my my true top ten letterbox, it would have included um, John Wick, um, Guardians of the Galaxy, and the comedy with Jennifer Lawrence. No hard feelings. So they they all got bumped in okay. favour so of. Okay. So they're your honourable mentions. Uh, well, I'm just cheating. Okay. But they were in my top ten. Is my point. Okay. Uh, okay. But now now they got bumped. So okay. That's how. That's what Yasti would say about twenty other movies. <laughs> that's. All. Yes. What, 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 Go what, ahead, Joe. What is the number 10 break. you have picked? <laughs> the number 10 I put on the list is the David Fincher movie, The Killer. Mm. David, oh. David Fincher with Michael Fassbender in the yes. lead role. Um, a adaptation of a graphic novel um, mm-hmm. and a very quietly confident movie in the way that Fincher always delivers. It's a very precisely directed film. Um, it's a movie with... Uh, a, sp- a sparsity of, of dialogue and some some quite ridiculous moments, but um, it stayed with me over the course of the year. So um, I'm going to just kind of stop there. I don't know if that made any of your top tens. Probably not. Nope. Because it's um, it's very action oriented and it's not necessarily. Um, yes, you remind me. Did you see that one? I did. It's a very cerebral action movie. Yeah. Right. And you know. Uh, Another year, I would have put it in. Uh, there's yeah. just more riches this year, I think. Same. And, and I love, I love movies which show up on other people's lists, which are unexpected because then you're like, oh yeah, the yeah. killer was great film. Yeah, I, I, a couple of things stand out to me about the killer. Uh, one was that you reminded me, Joe, when we did the review and we did a full review of the killer, um, that I thought it was all silent, but it was actually a narr- It was actually like an over um, talk over at the beginning. So I thought, Oh God, this voice is over. A voiceover. Thank you. And it had a very memorable performance only for about 10 minutes by Tilda Swinton. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Lots of little great. great yes. little roles. Tilda Swinton in every movie pretty yeah. much, but especially in this one. Yeah. But it is a fine Swiss watch of a movie. It, it is. It, it, yeah. Like, it's a good way to describe it's very it. Very well engineered. It clicks mm. together nicely. It's, it's just, yeah. it's handsome. And yeah. on Netflix. Not on my, not on my list, but good movie nonetheless. Yes. Okay. Yazdi. Number 10. So my number 10 movie is a film that I can, probably the only one in my top 10 that I can recommend to everyone. I can recommend to little kids. I can recommend to their parents. I can recommend to their grandparents. I think this movie has the makings of a holiday classic and the movie is The Holdovers, um, which, you know, we all saw. It's Alexander Payne's recent movie, most recent movie, it, it's been, it, it was in theaters for a long period of time, purely through word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, I don't know, it's like a warm hug of a movie. It's like a blanket that you sit in front of the fireplace with in terms of it. It, it also, as we mentioned during our review, it understands grief very well. I just have a lot of fondness. Yeah. I, that fondness for me has, for the movie hasn't eroded and... Uh, uh, you know exactly how the movie's going to go, but yet you enjoy it every step of the way. Yeah, and Paul Giamatti and Divine um, Randolph Randolph just won the Golden Globe last weekend mm-hmm. um, for Best Supporting Actress and Best Actor in a movie in, in a Lead comedy. Movie, yeah. yeah, 
Look, I, funnily enough, holdovers didn't make either my top 10 or my honorable mentions. That's not to say I didn't enjoy it, but it didn't make, it didn't leave that mark on me. I kid you not. It is exactly adjacent to the killer on my list, yes. Ah, so, okay. Um, similar place in my heart in, in terms of Interesting. Um, its impact on me. I didn't connect with it. I didn't feel that emotional heft from it. I thought it was a handsome movie and I liked that it was a period drama and I thought everyone acted great and I loved Divine Randolph in it. But it, I just, I couldn't connect with that movie. There's an earnestness about yeah. the holdovers <laughs> that um, I didn't, I had, that had to percolate as we were talking about percolating but uh, you know as i kind of got to thinking about it over time like that i have a real fondness for yeah. it hmm. in, yeah. in in kind of um in hindsight which maybe didn't come through in our initial review of it because i i, I did think it was a, you know very very nicely made movie but but there's a fondness that i have and and i was just speaking to a couple of friends of mine yesterday when we were playing pickleball um uh, uh, about that and and they loved it and yeah and everybody like, i know loves it ev- yeah Gosh, and that's the, that's what's the wrong response with me? yeah what is wrong with you <laughs> i don't know i just maybe maybe it was just the time of year and there was so much other good stuff and when you're eat, you know when you're drinking from a fire hose it's it's difficult to pick it up but our friend angel and joe they watched it and they absolutely loved yeah. it as well yeah okay yeah. it's it's on peacock if folks want well, to well if angel and joe love it i mean <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a lot of people yeah. Yeah. no i know it's I know. a crowd pleaser yeah. i know it is it is a crowd pleaser yeah. but um, it's, it's a good one though it's not okay. some crowd pleasers though yeah and i think it will do i think I think Divine Randolph will do well at the awards, Oscars. at the Oscars. I yeah. think she'll get, D- and she'll get I mean, that's a great and very deserving, deserving. Absolutely. Yeah, very, very much. So my number 10 is Oppenheimer. Oh. Um, yeah, it made my top 10 list. Um, I think it's a really handsome movie. I was scared going into it because it was over three hours long. I think it's very, very talky, but I was blown away by, again, um, Robert Downey Jr., who just won the um, Best Supporting Actor in a movie lead performance, whatever categories they have. Um, And I think it won Best Movie at the Golden Globes. Um, And I think it was just handsome. Mm -hmm. You know, I think in in the wrong mood, it will, it's too much. But um, in the right mood, it's a really educational, thrilling, interesting, historical take on on a really important moment in time how far outside your top top 34 was oppenheimer yes the- <laughs> I, I would glad i would gladly put it in the top 10 another year oh. i you know i is the, it in one of your honorable it's mentions not because i think both barbie and oppenheimer don't need more recognition okay. they don't need more championing yeah. that's the only reason and i think oppenheimer is the movie to beat for best film this year the oscars yeah. especially mm-hmm. after its strong performance at the golden globes so that's the only reason i i Listen, I, I don't think this is Christopher Nolan's best movie uh, by a long mile, but I think for the longest time, Nolan was too on the fringe with Memento and Insomnia and those movies. Or then he became... Inception, not Insomnia. That's what you... In, no, that's there was a movie called Insomnia, Insomnia as well. The yeah, one, yeah. And The Prestige. Oh, did he do that one? Yeah. Oh my yeah, God, one. I thought yeah. you were just being facetious. No, no, no. <laughs> And then he made movies which were too mainstream, yeah. like, like the Batman movies and Inception and... Uh, Dunkirk. Dunkirk and so forth. But this is just, this is just the right, I think this is the right prestige level film, which is going to get him the recognition that he deserves. Yeah. He's going to become even more insufferable and arrogant, yeah. but his time has come. Yeah. I will admit it, he so deserves Joe, where it. where is Oppenheimer yes. on your list? You Number know, one. <laughs> um, you know, you, one would think, right? Um, mm-hmm. As the as an Nolan sycophant in the group, um, you, you would think it was up there. I, I admired this movie. I didn't love it. It's, it's Did it like even make said, your top 10? It did make my top 10. It, made, it landed number seven. Okay. okay. Um, so it's very high up there in terms of my, my appreciation and esteem for it. Um, it's a very technically accomplished movie. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and like you said, Rashmi, it's, it's, it's men talking. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Uh, for three hours. Yeah. And so it is, it is men talking. It is men talking. Yeah. And yeah. one woman. Yeah. And, and two women, sorry. Yes. And and two naked women occasionally. <laughs> no, only one naked woman. <laughs> occasionally talking. But no, it, it is. It's it's a very powerfully made biopic, um, that I think um you know, it brings together all of Nolan's strengths, right? And I think he he's not necessarily a heart person. But it brings together a very factual string of events. It's handsomely made. It's gorgeously shot in IMAX. Um, 
and it, 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 it brings with it a seriousness mm-hmm. that lends itself really well to the subject matter. So, um, yeah, I, I really liked Oppenheimer, just not my favorite now. Okay, either. so it's number seven on your list then? Yep. It's, okay. It's on available on DVD right now yes. as well as to rent. <laughs> yes. Uh, and I to give credit where it's due, I think this is a part of American history which that chapter chapter needs to be told. And I did not know much about it. And I think it's required watching to to learn about this part of American history. So all, all, all power to him. Okay, number nine, Joe. Okay. Um, I've gone with Martin Scorsese's Killers of the Flower Moon in my number oh. nine. Yes. Yeah. Now, again, it, this is a movie that I think... It's polarizing. <laughs> Excuse me, polarizing. Ashmi, you particularly, I think, I polarized. Had, had some uh, difficulties with this one. But um, look, Scorsese knows how to direct a movie. This movie uh, is just done really well with um, some wonderful characters. I struggled with the source material for this. I read the book. Um, I found the book a, a little kind of dry and slow going. And the movie is also similarly slow, go- <laughs> slow going. I feel... Uh, blessed to have seen it in the movie theatre because I think it requires a level of patience that I might have found difficult in a home environment Uh, but nonetheless uh, just a a really well-crafted important story you mentioned yes the Oppenheim is a piece of American history that's important to memorialize in film and and this this one is also uh, very important uh, to to remember what what happened what was done Um, and again I think the movie took a different mm-hmm. tack to the book. We talked about that in a review, but I think that worked really well. It focused on a couple of characters, whereas the the book very much played out like kind of a police investigation was very much f- um, from the perspective of a, a minor character, I think, in, in the, the film adaptation. That worked very much in its favor, but Scorsese is just... He's so accomplished at what he does. He understands the pacing, character, technicality. He knows when to use violence. Um, it, 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 it's just a well-crafted movie. I mean, Scorsese is the closest that we have to an elder, elder statesman in American cinema, and he's really earned it. Um, Joe, uh, Killers of the Flower Moon is number eight on my list. Okay. Um, I love this movie um, because, you know, as, as big... You know, as much of a huge, you know, a mammoth of a presence as Scorsese has, he has humility because he started off with a screenplay, which, like you said, concentrated. The original version of this movie was going to be about, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio playing the police detective who became like the first member of the FBI. And as he got involved with the Osage people and the tribes and their people, he recognized that the heart of the story rested with the two characters played eventually by Lily Gladstone and um, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro as well. So he kind of adapted and changed that movie as he was filming it because he recognized where where the story lies. And Lily Gladstone won Best Actress at the Golden Globes and she was interviewed afterwards and she said that she's obviously thought a long time about this movie and she thinks that the movie's going to stand the test of time because the relationship year between Leonardo DiCaprio's character and Lily Gladstone's character in a way represents the relationship of America with indigenous peoples. Oh, okay. And it immediately kind of unlocked this thing, like the whole relationship, it kind of unlocked, we, yeah. you know, how things stand. So I, I, I think, I think it's great as long, it's like three hours and three minutes, no, three hours and 30 minutes, but it went by really quickly for me. Um, uh, in, in the cinemas, like, yeah, definitely a very important part of American history that everybody should watch. Thoughts, Rashmi? <sighs> no, I don't really want to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I said enough during our uh, podcast. It, it's just not something that resonated with me at all. Mm. I didn't like the way it was filmed. It felt too dark. I found it a little dull. Um, I didn't particularly enjoy Lily Gladstone's performance. <gasps> um <laughs> I, I, I just don't feel like it's his best work. It just didn't resonate with me at all. Interesting. Yeah. Right. All right, Yasti, number nine. 
My number my number nine is a movie we saw at the very start of the year. It was a movie which was actually under consideration for last year's Oscars, but I'm including it because it was released in the US and most countries only in 2023. And that movie left a giant scar, you know, on my heart, on my brain, and that scar still hasn't healed. And that movie is Joyland. Oh. And um, it's a movie which was Pakistan's entry oh. last year, for the Oscars and it's just, you know, I, I live for experiences in the cinema where a movie kind of shakes you up and you're kind of going along where somebody is telling a story which is daring and unusual and this is the kind of movie which can cause riots and it's the kind of movie that, you know, the very fact that it's screened even is, is an amazement and it's... You know, and I, there's, I can talk about this movie for hours, but I think the one thing that I've come away from the movie is that it talks about if somebody's struggling with their identity, how that impacts not just them, but irreversibly impacts people around them. And no other movie has brought that that to the fore as powerfully as Joyland. So it's it's a movie that's going to stay with me for a long time. Phenomenal movie, Asdi. I didn't know we were allowed to consider 2022 movies, so no, even more released, cheating. No, it was no. released in 2023. <laughs> we, hadn't, we had not seen it in that's 2022. That's true, we didn't, we didn't. Yeah. It, it's phenomenal. Where, where is it available, Yasdi? So Joyland is available to rent <coughs> on Apple as well as on uh, Prime for five ninety nine, and it's also on the Criterion channel. Okay, so this is definitely worth your money. Great movie, Yasdi. Yeah, 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 I agree. I mean, it's a great pick, and I wouldn't have thought of it because it was on the last year's uh, academy award um nominations list but yeah i think for me you said it the most surprising thing about this movie is that it got made where mm -hmm. it got made yeah um it's very surprising subject matter to, to come from pakistan and you know as much as that might be kind of a, a generalization um, I myself was, was simply stunned at the bravery of the filmmakers, the bravery of the actors um, to, to tell this story in the way that they did. Good, really good stuff. Yeah. One word, Joyland. Yeah. Yeah. yeah great movie. My number nine, Yazdi, which I think may be on your list or your list of 100 recommendations, is the movie Rye Lane, which was a British movie. Um, it came out around March of last year. It premiered at Sundance. It is a beautiful you know it's called a romantic comedy but it's more than a romantic more comedy than that, yeah. and it's got this really cute two protagonists um played by david johnson and vivian opera and it's just watching the two of them in one day it's funny and it's thrilling and it's silly and it's lovely and it will warm your heart what a script it has and how beautifully is it shot. And yeah. this, this director knows how to light dark skinned faces. Yeah. And um, Rye Lane is on Hulu. This may be the reason for you to just get Correct. a one month Hulu subscription. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's a wonderful film. I can't wait to see what this director does next. But you owe yourself, um, especially if you like movies that make you think and make you feel good about two people, two strangers meeting together and kind of figuring out if they're right for each other. You have to watch Rye Lane. Great choice. It's my number 14. Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. I did not see that one. No. So um, I know that, Rashmi, you've been, you've been buzzing about that movie all year. It's lovely. It's I stayed think you with should, me. You should especially watch it because of all the things it is, I think the one thing it's most is it's a London movie. Mm. Yes. It's very much a London movie. Yes. The whole thing is set in London and it's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now I remember you, Rash, when you were watching it, I was um, probably doing some homework or something like that. Um, okay. Good stuff. Yeah. Number eight. We know Yazdi's is already Killers of the Flower Moon. That's correct. So Joe, number eight. Um, I'm sad to see this in my number eight, because I'm sure it's much higher on both of your lists, but um, sorry if I'm kind of, you know, um, killing, killing the punchlines. Yeah. Past Lives. Um, this is a movie um, that I think you probably both have a lot to say. Um, it's a movie that we saw middle of the year, and normally movies that you see so, so early on within the year kind of fade away. Uh, this one did not. We've talked about it constantly throughout uh, the rest of 2023. Um, it's a movie from Korea. 
Um, yeah. Is that correct? Korean director. Yeah, I was going to say, I, was, yeah. I, I, was, I was like, I had yeah. a kind of yeah. a pin, pin drop there. I was like, oh, no, did no. I get that wrong? No, no. Because that would be very embarrassing. Uh, it's a Korean movie. Um, uh, really one of the more wistful, romantic, uh, subtle movies that I think I've seen all year. But it has such a such an impact on me. And I think I didn't really understand how I felt about this movie until a few days after seeing it, when it you know delivered its kind of gut punch uh, of emotionality. I think... Rashmi, the impact was a bit more immediate on you, but... Um. It is my number one movie of 2023. Oh, it I made it to the top. And damn you, it's my number one movie too. <laughs> really, oh, no. Asti, high five. So I gave, I mean, I, I gave away the punchline. That's yep. okay. No, that's fine. I Look, this has sucker punched me. Uh, when I was looking at my top 10 list, I kept thinking I wanted to move it further down and I couldn't. Mm -hmm. I couldn't bring myself to not make it my my favorite movie this year to me and i was thinking about this this morning as i knew because we were going we were going to record today why did i love it so much and i think it's the fact that it is about unrequited love when two people are actually happy in yeah. their lives and it not, doesn't shout they're happy not being with each correct. other correct right and it's not it doesn't shout and it doesn't it's not melodramatic it's the quietest, most subtle, beautiful performance. And it broke me. This movie broke me. Yeah, I think if we have two people listening to our podcast, then both of them, if they haven't seen it, the first thing they should do is rent this. It's four ninety nine on Amazon Prime or on Apple TV. Yep. It's the only movie I have seen this year, which I went again in the theater to watch it. Uh, it's the only movie I've seen I twice. know, and I asked you, Yasdi, did you cry the second time? And you said yes. I did. I, you know, I think there is something so wise and understated. And I, you know, I've listened to a lot of interviews with the director, Celine Song, as well as Greta Lee, who I hope gets nominated for Best Actress. Uh, and they have said that they struggled through the entire movie to not be large. They constantly kept rolling it back. Make it small, make it small, make it small. So I I fear this might this movie might be too delicate for some, but if you are able to put away, you know, not be distracted by things and watch it at home for two and a half hours, it's one of the most oh, giving movies. Yes. The script is impeccable. The acting is impeccable. Yes. I, I jolted when you said it's a movie from South Korea because the first part of the movie is set in South Korea. The second part is set in New York. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a US-Korea co-production. Um, but it's about the one who got away. It's about... It's more than anything else. It's about immigration and how yes. immigration changes you. Yes. And it's about fitting in. It's, you know, the director has said, and this really resonated for me because she put into words what I've been feeling my whole life because I immigrated to the U.S. And she said, when, when you leave the country that you were born in, you were a whole donut, but you leave the middle part of it in that country. And when you come, come and immigrate to the new country, you are a donut with a hole in the middle. And everybody who knew you from the place you grew up in, they know the full version of you. But everybody in the country you've immigrated to know the version with a hole in it. And so, you know, the people you interact with, fall in love with in your new country only knows the donut. They don't need, know this other part of you. And I don't know somehow that completely explains me. And it's just... <laughs> So it's about so many things. It's it's wise, it's tender, it's wistful. It, nobody screams even once in the movie. Yeah. It's delicate. There are no bad people in this movie. Yes. Um, every, all three actors deserve all the flowers in the world. Past Lives is the one movie I would choose to watch. Yes. Above, wow. all, above all else in 2023. I love this movie so much. As Same. Do you. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Okay. So have, now that... what? <laughs> yes. I have a little bit of trauma about being referred to as a donut. I'm I'm uh, I'm a donut. Yes. Yes. There was, there was, yes. There was, there was a, a kid at school that used to call me Donut. Ah, I that's kind of mean. Uh, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm, he was insightful, Joe. Maybe it's because I was brown and sweet, but 
<laughs> I reject the notion of being you know, a big cold donut. Okay. No. Okay. So um, number eight for me then is, and Yasi, I think this might be on your list, is the movie Monster, which is um, the Japanese movie. It's a drama uh, directed and edited by Hirokazu Koreeda. Um, And it is a fascinating movie about two young boys. But we we join the movie at the beginning when a mother, a single mother, starts noticing some strange behavior um, in her child and goes to her the child's teacher and says, something's up, what's going on? And it kind of unravels. And it's almost a thriller, um, but it's again about family and it's about friendship and it's about um, acceptance. Uh, it's phenomenal. It's my number seven movie. So, ah, okay. Um, <laughs> I I pray at the church of Hirokazu Koreeda. Every movie he's made, I don't think there is a director, living director working right now who is more humane. All of his movies, I just mentioned this about past lives, all of his movies, there are no bad guys. There are no easy villains who you can blame, you know, for what's happening or who can drive the plot. His plot is just good people being in bad situations and he refuses to judge any of his characters. I think for the first time in his career, he's made a movie which looks at almost like a Rashomon, like where he looks at almost the same set of events through yes. the eyes of three different sets of characters. Yes. And you learn a little, uh, the last duel did that. Remember yeah, last yeah, year with Ridley well. Scott? Yes. The, the male ago, version yeah. and the female version. Yeah. But in this three different set of characters are seeing the same events and you learn, you are given a little bit more facts each time, but it really plays on the unknowable nature of truth and how you, you can't help but judge something from where you're sitting and how wrong you can be at every step. And it's about a hundred things. And these amazing child actors, I don't know how he was Phenomenal. able to extract these yes. performances. It's about schools and parents and, and fitting in and, and, and the, the price you pay for being different. And it's about a hundred things. Yeah. It's, it's a lovely movie. This movie is right now in, in small cinemas. It's, it's in theaters right now, but it's going to be released for rental only in February, on February 22nd okay. is the date. But people should write the name down. Yes. Monster. Monster 2023, uh, not 2020, Monsters Inc., not Monster not, the movie yeah. with Charlize Berry. Theron. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. so this oh, yeah, is. Which, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so, yeah. so this is Monster 2023. It's a Japanese movie with subtitles. You will thank us for watching this movie, for recommending this. Okay. So we already have uh, Joe. Your number seven was Oppenheimer. Yazdi, you've just talked about Monster being your number seven. seven. So my number seven then is the movie A Thousand and One. I don't know if this is on any of your lists. Mm -hmm. So A Thousand and One came and went very quietly. It is available for rent on Prime. Uh, no, so it's available on Prime if you have subscription or you can pay for it on Apple TV for three ninety nine. This is a phenomenal movie with a fantastic performance that somehow has got lost by Tayona Taylor. Um, this is a fan fantastic, unusual story about a single mother whose child is in foster care and she kidnaps her child. Um, I'll leave it at that. Um, this is one of, again, I think this has just got lost in the mix. This is such a good movie. And I wish Tayana Taylor had got some recognition for best actress. Her, her performance is phenomenal. This is one that I'm ashamed to say I still haven't been able to watch. Oh, and yeah, I, I, I really need to get on it. And yeah, everybody's been speaking very highly of it from the beginning. But yeah, I, I need to yeah. correct that. Joe, you didn't see this one at no, all, did I you? Haven't, yeah, but yeah. again, I, it's, it's there on my list simply because you thought so highly yeah. of it. Um, so I need to get to, to, to that. Quickly. It's just so unusual. I mean, it talks about, you know urbanness it talks about single parenting it talks about the african-american community it talks about wealth it talks about privilege it talks about so many things but at its core it is about a relationship between a mother a mother and her son um and expectations so okay number six yes uh joe <clears throat> I think this is the first movie on my list that may not be on either of yours. A um, little bit of a wild card here, but it's a movie that just just blew me away in so many ways. And has, again, it's all about what resonates with you and what sticks with you. Um, it's Sofia Coppola's um, movie mm. Priscilla. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, 
really carried and supported by a wonderful, mesmerizing performance by uh, her, her name is really Kaylee awkward. Spini, Kaylee like Spini, that. yes, yeah. Um, as the Priscilla who did Presley get a character. nomination at the Globes? Oh, she did. Okay, yeah, because I, I, I can't remember. But I think it's because they can have ten, right? Yeah. That's the issue. Five yeah. for drama and five for comedy. Correct. This movie is Musical, not without yeah. its faults, but <laughs> I think um, it, it views its events with like a you know like a very singular you know the singularity of vision here, which is everything purely from the perspective of this young female character who's you know wrapped up in a world of craziness around you know her life with Elvis Presley and um yeah it's just kind of stayed with me it's it's a it's a very um relaxed movie given the mayhem of of some of its you know su subject matter um Sophia Coppola always kind of tickles my funny bone in the sense of you know she's the she's a director that always somehow manages to pull on my particular yeah heartstrings. You, you like her a lot Ev everything that she she's done maybe bar the the bill murray misfire um from a year or two ago um you well, know, I like just very, oh i like that one yeah on the on the rocks i think yeah, yeah. yeah. with well, rashida no, jones which is, which is absolutely fine but yeah. it was it was not um you know kind of up there in terms yeah. of other movies that she's made uh, but nonetheless yeah I, i'm not sure that is this on any of your lists? Nope. Mm -mm. Was it even in your you know, like nope. expanded list? No, yeah, because no, I, I thought, thought that. that I thought that I thought it was a fantastic performance by mm -hmm. Kaylee Spaney, but the movie I enjoyed the movie. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie, but it didn't overly, stand out to me. I don't want to overly defend it because yeah. it, it's a movie with some problems. Yeah. But at the same time, um, as as something that's um, kind of st stayed with me over the course of the year, um, and something that will kind of will be there in my memory in perpetuity i felt i felt a lot of emotion connected with the character in this movie and um yeah just, just i thought it well. was a great elvis performance i thought the performance by um jacob elordi jacob elordi who is everywhere at the moment he's doing the adam driver thing i think he's the adam driver of mm -hmm. 2023 2024 um i thought his performance as elvis was really good and actually better than the butler guy from last year yeah, no, I, um, I thought it was a much better Elvis, but I think Austin, well, but, Austin Butler. Yeah, but it was a very different Elvis. I mean, I it, think was, it wasn't because the movie wasn't here, about was, him. Here was the Elvis as viewed by Priscilla as yes. opposed to the Elvis that the rest yeah. of the world knew. So, you know, yes, I agree with you, though. I mean, I think it is in yeah. terms of um, his performance, he, yeah. he, he really nailed the essence of. Of, of the character and, and I do like that the book was this was based on the book by Priscilla correct. Presley so it felt like it was more authentic that, that's um, a great word I mean that that's exactly it there's an authenticity to its portrayal of events that um that just stays kind of you know the integrity of it yeah. stays throughout the entire yeah it's a quiet movie it doesn't sh again much. it doesn't shout yeah um no I think if I thought about it I, I would have put it on my top 30 <laughs> okay. High praise indeed. High from praise indeed. <laughs> well, I, mean, I would have put it in my top 30. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, yes. Of the 35 movies you would. Yes. You saw this yes. Year. No, I'm kidding. Yes, the number six. So there is some recency bias, uh, meaning, and it, that's going to be true for my number six and number Which is five. why the studios put the movies out at the end of the Correct. year. But there are some movies I've seen recently in the last month which really have left a deep impact on me and like I'm going to, it's going to be the next two films I talk about but number six on my list is the movie from the latest movie from many times retired you know Japanese <gasps> master here it comes <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki the yes. Japanese filmmakers are the boy really, and the heron the boy and the heron which is which is miraculously for a Japanese subtitled movie with a very very uh, you know labyrinthine plot and very philosophical that movie has been in cinemas now for the seventh or eighth week playing in imax screens no less and it's an amazement um i love this movie because you know miyazaki keeps saying that he's this is his last movie <laughs> and then you know he gets tired and he comes back and wolf yeah wolf. Wolf. but god you know come back a hundred times if you take keep making movies like this. I'm just going to come out and say, this movie is not for kids at all. Mm. It's not for little kids. Maybe if you're a very um, 
old soul, 12 or 12 year old or older, it may be fine. Otherwise, you may find it very frustrating because the whole basis of the movie is grief. The, it, the whole movie is based on a little boy who hasn't figured out how to come to terms with losing his mom. Aww. And and the plot is so elliptical, it just keeps going back and forth and you really don't know. As, as with all of his movies, it lapses into the fantastical and there are all these creatures and beasts. And then it kind of comes back to himself and him, you know, trying to figure out what's happening with his relationship with his mom now that she's no longer there. So it almost has this... You know, some may say lack of a plot, but it's so deeply philosophical. It's so deeply spiritual. It's about coming to terms with grief and it's gorgeous to look at. The original Japanese title for the movie is How Do You Live? Oh, which I think is... Heartbreaking. Makes so much more yeah. sense once you, once you watch the movie. But, you know, I understand why they're calling it The Boy and the Heron, which is more literal because... You know, no no parent is going to bring their kids to watch a movie called How Do You Live? Yeah, right. um, but and yes, do you remind us? Is So this is, because um, I th I thought that there was a very esteemed uh, English language uh, oh. cast. So has it been dubbed or is it? Yeah, so it's it's playing both in, as the Japanese t subtitle version as well as an English dubbed version. And the English dubbed version has like big, big name yeah, actors huge, in it. Yeah, like yeah it's got... Um, Gosh, Robert Pattinson, Robert not Pattinson the is name, in it. He plays the heron. I mean, he voices the heron. Big name, big name actors okay. have and dubbed it. And which one did you watch? I watched the Japanese subtitle okay. one on IMAX. Okay, wow. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it just it just the beauty itself just filled me up. So I'm ashamed to say because we were traveling, we just yeah. didn't get this one in, to this one in time. But it is still on my list to go and see it. In fact, yeah. it is MLK weekend this weekend, and I propose joe that we try and see this one it's old yeah yeah. I yeah and and i think it, it would behoove us to watch it in imax or a good screen right yeah. Yasti? Yeah. can i ask yeah. you Yasti? i mean miyazaki movies you know i i, I struggle with them <laughs> i admire them tremendously i i see the artistry i see the depth and the characters but i don't necessarily enjoy them you know mm. we had a very heated debate many podcasts ago well, about spirit to the, the way um, which I've, I've tried to see and it's a, it's a beloved movie by many, but I've always struggled to kind of put it together in a way that makes sense to me. In a linear story. Yeah. I admi no, I admire the artistry, but I, I, I can't, they never kind of get into my heart. And since, you know, since then we've seen quite a few, we Rashmi and actually went to the Ghibli museum in, in Japan, <sighs> Uh, which which is you a, must it's, go it's to. It's a place of wonder. Yes, do you? Would, but but yeah. his movies still, you know, I, it's interesting you say it's for adult because I, I don't know what the p appeal to, to children is other than kind of bouncing ghosts and things like that. But So there's a lot of bouncing ghosts in this one. Mm. There's a lot of, you know, little fish who talk and so forth. So I, I think, like I said, there's big portions of this which are elliptical and I don't know if we don't, just know the Japanese relevance of that right. or if it's meant to be just fantastical and not mean anything. But what it is, the parts which which work really work for me and the whole as a whole, for me, it's just a really, really good understanding of how kids are. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we tend to idolize kids and we, in, especially in movies, right? They're either, you know either honorable and perfect little kids or they are like mean bullies but kids are a combination of everything the the the, the boy in this movie he's everything he's a good boy trying to deal with what's happening to him his whole life is changing he's moved to a new place and he has little impulses that he can't help little kids have that so it i just adored how it reminded me of myself as a child so mm. i think i think it's a very meditative film but even if you set that aside just visually, it's oh, it's impeccable. Okay. I love this. Yeah. Cool. What's your number six, Rashmi? My number six is, I don't, and again, I don't know if this is on any of your lists, is the lovely little movie called Theater Camp. 
Oh, I did watch it. And yeah. it is, um, it's available on Hulu again. Yes. So your Hulu prescription will buy you Rye Lane and Theatre Camp. Subscription. Or you, subscription. Not <laughs> prescri- what did I say? Prescription. I'll write you a prescription for <laughs> Hulu yeah. anytime. And, yeah. You know what? It would be a great prescription. If you're feeling bad, this would be a great prescription for you. And my you. next movie is also on Hulu. So yes, ah, buy, okay. get your Hulu. Yes. Yes. Or you can watch it paid on Prime or Apple TV. So this is a really, it's kind of a mockumentary comedy film directed by Molly Gordon and Nick Lieber. Um, and it's just it's delightful this just made me laugh so much but it's actually got kind of like a biting sat- satiricalness to it about kind of you know corporations and um theater camps as a whole and um it's 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 just lovely i love this movie love 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 this movie theater camp theater camp it appealed to me because at the end of the day, it's about misfits. It's yes. about nerds. Yes. Little kids who are nerds who have found their thing. Yes. And they are trying to prevail amongst other nerds because the minute they leave that, they're going to be judged upon. The whole world is going to see them as, you know, geeks and nerds and whatever. Yeah. So there is a little fraternity of misfits in this movie, which I really like. And uh, what's his name is really funny. Um, the guy who was... Uh, he was in on Broadway. Yes, uh, it on, is. Um, on uh, Dear Evan. Dear yes. Evan. Oh, Dear okay. Evan Hansen. Dear Evan ben Hansen. Platt. Ben Platt. Ben is very Platt's good funny. It, yeah. Molly Gordon is Molly fantastic. Gordon is she's too. she's fast becoming one of my favorite actresses, and I hope she gets her day. Mm-hmm. She did just did. She was in The Bear, which just won a lot of mm-hmm. the awards at the. Uh, yeah, at the um, terrific show. Yeah. yeah, yeah, at the Globes. She's fantastic. So yeah, I love this movie. So we are halfway through. And Joe, we've been recording for five hours. 50 minutes. Okay. Not so, bad. Yeah. Perfect. So we, as we, this is the top fives for top everyone five now. now. Okay. So Joe, number five. I will be blown away if this isn't on your lists also in this position or higher, but the movie All of Us Strangers. <sighs> it's number three for me. It is number four for me. Okay. So this is a very... Um, emotionally powerful movie um, that kind of plays a sleight of hand uh, with you at first. I mean, that that's one of the things that, um, again, I, we, we, we try and be careful here about not, mm-hmm. not to going into spoilers. Uh, statute of limitations on kind of end of year spoilers is still a little touchy for me. So well, let, this is still careful. on at the movie theaters. So yeah. 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 Um, what I will say though, is it's an, inc- an incredibly, <coughs> excuse me, accomplished movie. Um, again, you know, we're very much talking about the theme of grief and loss. Um, it's just so clev- <coughs> cleverly constructed and beautifully acted. Uh, it contains a couple of my favourite performances of the year, mm-hmm. but particularly the lead actor. Name is escaping me. Andrew right, Scott. Andrew Scott. Thank you. Um, possibly my favorite male performance of yes. the year you know and that's saying a lot when you know i really enjoyed like killian murphy's performance in oppenheimer and and other you know um fantastic male lead performances but this is the one that kind of you know tugged on on my emotions much more than 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 other movies again its impact on me was felt days after viewing and <laughs> i left the movie thinking yeah that was good very powerful but i didn't you know i think i said in our podcast about this i didn't know that i'd been emotionally slain by this until a couple of days later when it all just kind of came flooding to me and so um yeah just a very very accomplished beautifully quiet reserved um movie that's just just way up there i love this movie and what i'll say going into this next section is my top five could have been all one, two, three, four, five. Like I couldn't quite decide other than I loved past lives and it had such an impact on me. I will say my next five movies could all avoid for one through five. Um, all of Us Strangers was devastating, devastatingly good. And it has a really good performance by Paul Mescal, who was nominated last year for the movie After Sun, After Sun which was so good. So he's not just a one trick pony. Um, Apparently he goes by Mescal. Oh, Mescal. And, and okay, not, not Mescal. Mescal because that's the drink. Mescal, yeah. I know, because it's like a shot. Yeah. Um, it's such an unusual movie and I still can't figure out what it is 
But I know, again, it's a fantastic movie about grief as well. So lots of movies about grief uh, this year, I think. Yeah, I'm annoyed that a lot of reviews of this movie, including notably from NPR and other places, they give away a major point in the movie, which one of the joys of the movie was for, for, as I was watching, I was like, how is this logically possible? And like what's going on? Like what's going on? And they, they mention it up front, even, even in the description of the movie. So anyway, it is a very... What is this movie? It, it's a strange brew of a movie. And this is what I wrote down, which is that, is it a melancholic mystery about the afterlife? Is it a meditation on how we handle grief? Is it existential science fiction? Or is it just a loose device to let these amazing actors shine? I think it's all of the I above, don't know what Yazdi. it is, but I adore it. And it sits in my brain, bouncing about, sculpting theories, begging for some release of an explanation. But at the same time, I hope that never comes because then I would stop thinking about this movie. Yeah. And I think he's Andrew Hay, who has made so many amazing movies already in yes. his short career. He has made something wistful and aching and restless, which yes. I think will stand the test of time. At one level, you can almost think of it as a mystery, like, like The Sixth Sense or something like that. At the other level... It's just working metaphysically in terms of what we do to be able, in order to handle grief, which can be, which can extend over decades. Yeah, and like you said about so, the boy and the heron, Yazdi, it's you could call this movie "How We Live." Yeah, how do you also, live? Also, how yeah. do you live? I mean, yeah. it, it truly is. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. What a great movie. And again, I wish Andrew Scott starts getting a little bit more recognition as a, a best male lead yes uh joe i agree with you and as much as paul mescal and andrew scott deservedly are getting a lot of you know recognition for their acting in this movie i think the two other actors in this movie are yes. with very small roles claire foy and yes. uh, J J jamie jamie bell jamie bell are in in small roles they're just so impactful so good. yeah uh, and the production i mean we did a we did an extensive review of this yes, movie yeah, so um, in it, our yeah, podcasts yeah. but um yeah yeah. Great choice, Joe. So this is a small movie which is going to be playing in a small theater next to you. It's well, you know, close to you. It's well worth seeking it out. Don't expect, you know, a traditional movie. Just kind of sink into and surrender to the movie and see where it takes you. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yes, your number five. My number five is, again, Recency Bias. It's a movie that I saw maybe 10 days ago and I, I cannot I, it, it won't leave me alone and it, it's not that it won't leave me alone because it's mystical or puzzling far from it it's as straightforward as a movie can get and I always try to shed some light on Indian cinema because that's where I'm from yeah. and hard on, hand on my heart I cannot think of a better Indian movie released this year than 12th Fail Oh, this is a movie which is on Hulu and 12th Fail to those who grew up in India, the 12th grade or the 12th, uh, 12th year of your education is very critical because it helps you get into college in India. So your 12th um, exams are very, very critical and your parents keep talking to you about you have to do well on your 12th. Well, here is the story. It's based on a true story of a kid who failed his 12th grade and uh, he grew up in Chambal, which is a very, very rural part of India, well famous for the dacoits. Ah, and it's yeah, a okay. Small village kid who grew up, and he was, you know, very heavily inspired by the IAS officer who kind of corrected some of the corruption in his village. And he just decided, I'm going to become an IAS officer. And this kid who had failed even his 12th grade. And the entire movie is a Dickens like you know, step-by-step step-by-step step description of what he has to go through to get this goal, which is completely outside his reach. And it's so inspiring and it's so beautiful and it's so um, open-hearted. The, the entire movie is frankly just an, um, an inspiration to everyone. There is nobody I would suggest not watch this movie. It's brilliantly acted. It's only an hour and... 50 minutes long. And where is it on, Yasti? It's on Hulu. Okay. And it's called 12th Fail. It's by the amazing 72-year-old director, Vidhu Vinod Chopra, who made many other amazing Hindu movies worth checking out. It's Dickens in India. It's wonderful. Great. 
Uh, haven't even heard of that one, Yazdi. So thank yeah. you for the for the um, top tip there. Yeah. Uh, my number five might be on Yazdi's. It definitely won't be on Joe's because he hasn't watched it yet. Despite me going on and on and on about it. My fifth movie, favorite movie is Anatomy of a Fall. <laughs> um, this is a French um, courtroom drama. Mm-hmm. It's written and directed by a lovely lady called Justine Triette, mm-hmm. who just won the uh, Golden Best Globes. Best screenplay. Best screenplay for and deservedly. Film deservedly so yeah. um <clears throat> and she apparently wrote it during pandemic during covid yeah yep it is a fantastic movie with a wonderful performance by the great sandra hula which i am sure we will mention in a few minutes again um i hope sandra hula makes it i think she's it's more than just a foreign best movie performance i think this is a best movie performance um and i hope that she starts getting a bit more recognition as well um i this is just fascinating this is a fascinating movie yes where is it on your list it's number four on my list oh, okay and, you know, all right another day of the week it, it could be my number exactly. two or my exactly. number one even. exactly i knew nothing about this movie when i went to watch it i just knew that it won the top prize at can correct um what a movie this is i i challenge anybody to come up with a film which has a better screenplay yeah it's it's so tight it's so tight and it's it's playing <laughs> it's playing with your expectations it's do it's it's doing somersaults in terms of you know on the face of it this movie is a courtroom drama about it's a who done it about what killed a man right what, a, a man falls off from his uh, ch- chalet in France to his death. And on the face of it, it's a procedural about, you know, who might, what was the reason for this man's death. And the movie very slyly and slowly moves away from focusing on who might have killed this man to become instead a procedural about this man's marriage to his wife. And Joe's trying really hard not to listen, by the way. He's like... <laughs> um, it's la, 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 la. it's yeah. so wonderfully acted. There's a there's a boy. They have a visually impaired, uh, impaired son, <clears throat> and the kid who plays that son is marvelous. Sandra Huller plays a very very difficult role. She's not your sympathetic loving wife who has been, you know, she's unlikable. Mistress. Yeah. She's unlikable and she's unapologetic, and she will not play to the court or the judge or anybody and. Oh, what a treat this film is. It gives me hope for the future of cinema, really. I, I'm, not, I'm not prone to superlatives, but this film is something else. Anatomy of a Fall. Yep. Everybody should watch it. Anatomy of a Fall is available to rent on Amazon. Yep. So we have uh, our and number... And one other f- thing, oh. sorry, even though it's a French production, I think more than 50% of it... It's is, in English It's, it's in spoken English yeah. because yeah. she speaks English in the movie. So yes. don't let that deter you. Yes. Yes. So we have Yazdi's number four, which is Anatomy of a Fall. And we have my number four, which is All of Us Strangers, which we've already discussed. Joe, what is your number four? Cue the eye rolling here. But it's a movie that we saw <laughs> early uh, on in the year. And um, my letterbox score for it was four and a half stars. Okay. And I stand by that now and it's still kind of puzzles me how it's landed quite this high up my list but it's the movie are you there god it's me ah, Margaret. yes okay. it's on my list and it's my it? number 13 okay it's it, a, it's it's my number 14 it's an amazing okay. film okay good because i i wasn't sure if i know rashmi you've had a little bit of eye rolling associated with it because it, it didn't quite work for you i mean this is a coming age coming of age story I liked of, of an I 11 liked year it. old girl <laughs> Um, it's, it's a movie that just, um, speaks to so, <laughs> to so, to so many little things. Uh, in particular, I love its handling of religion and religious dogma. Um, you know, there's, there's some very, um, great observational stuff in there. Uh, it's full of wonderful characters. The lead role, uh, is played by goodness, Abby Ryder. Thank Ford. you. That sounds exactly right. Abby Ryder, somebody, um, else. Abby Ryder Fortson. Fortson. Um, and just everything about this movie just kind of clicked into place for me. Um, we watched it with very low expectations, but it, it just kept coming up in our, our list of rentals. So we, 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 pl- we took the plunge one evening and I find 
I found myself just kind of inspired and delighted and, and, and kind of joyous uh, at, at where it went, how it told its story. The, everyone was pleasing in this. Um, just, just a great... It, it's up there simply because I enjoyed it so much. Um, and it, it's, you know, you, you described you have to do the holdovers as like a hug. This mm-hmm. one's kind of like a, a, a warm cuddle. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just it's it's wonderful. It's a snuggle. It is. It's, it's just it's wonderful. It, yeah. Uh, and, you you know, it's one of those movies where everything, it's, and I, I don't want to make it sound Disney-fied because it's not, but you keep waiting for bad things to happen <laughs> in some ways. But, and, they, and they don't, but it, it's just, it's, it's... I think it handles religion really well. A, a lot I of think it's, it's, it, it right handles right. growing Death. up really well. It handles moving. It handles, you know, grandparents and parents. and Coming of age. You know, the, and I always say, you know, we are the heirs of the arguments that our parents end up having. Oh, that's deep. It, it covers yeah. some of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a good choice. It's a good choice. Um, I, I mean... <laughs> In, in, in America, I mean, the, Judy Bloom wrote this book in the 1970s and, and it holds a very dear place mm-hmm. since the 70s for people who grew up, you know, since then as, as the book to, you know, for teenagers, teenage girls especially to read. And this is an adaptation of that book and there is something so right. It's, they're, they're kind of blessed with, I don't know, with Providence or whatever because it, and maybe maybe they did a really, really, really great job picking their lead actor or maybe they were just goddamn lucky but whatever it was the whole movie rests on the shoulders of uh, Abby Ryder Fortson and she is so believable she's so right um, and then we, you know I, where is Rachel McAdams's name for best supporting actress for this film yeah, she's she just great so in great in this movie I mean it, it, I guess yeah. she's playing the mom again which um, but it's, it, it's it's not an it's no, not an it, hard it's not an easy role no it wasn't and no. uh, but it it is kind of almost forgettable yeah. in the sense of yeah. you know, we, yeah. we've seen that character yeah but yeah I, I love that movie so, Joe, you're on again because, again, uh, number three, we already have Yazdi's All of Us Strangers. What is your number three, Joe? Um, by virtue of the fact that I haven't heard it mentioned yet, I hope it's high up on your list. So, I'll be very surprised, Rashmi, if this one makes it it's to your list, top three. Sure. Um, oh, I don't know which one you're going to say. <laughs> it's, again, surprising to me that at the end of the year, I'm making a statement that Yorgos Lanthimos directed... Oh. My oh, third all of my picks, Joe. favorite movie. I oh, did I really? That's and my okay, third yeah. favorite movie of the year, which is Poor Things. And Yasti, where did it appear for you? Number two, it's clearly. My number two. Wow. Movie of the year. Yes. Yeah. Um, <sighs> what what a bonkers movie this is! But I think unlike yeah, Lanthimos's other works, um, it it because it's so fantastical from the outset with its kind of you know camera angles and and textures and colors and um it, it 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 sits better with me than some of his other it, some of his other more abstract works like killing of a sacred deer and dog tooth and um the lobster uh all all of which are very irritating movies all to of me which are wonderful all films are fantastic. <laughs> no, i know and i know you you relate to yeah. them and love them yeah. but for me <laughs> excuse me for me they're so bloody abstract because they they seem to play it in a world that's realistic and yet they they take these themes and, and distort and warp. And so they don't make a lot of sense for me. The integrity of this movie works because it feels like a stage play. It feels like it's set on, on a, on a, on a theater stage. Um, and it, it's got my favorite lead female performance of the year, which is Emma Stone. And she probably will win. Yeah, yeah. It, this is this. It, it's again, either her or Lily Gladstone. This is, one of those two. And it should be Sandra Huller, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, we will have the the best actress debate at yeah. some other point. But yeah. for me, Emma Stone, this is a gift of a role for her because she gets to play a whole bunch of age ranges Correct. and she, she's got rich material to mine. But then stopping, you know, keeping that together with uh, um, kind of an integrity that doesn't go into the wacky is, is just, it, it, it's really, it's, it's so much fun to watch. And um I don't know. The movie has lots of things to say, and it's kind of controversial in its voice. It wouldn't be a Yorgos Lanthimos movie if it wasn't. But um, I just had so much fun watching this 
world and its bonkers, bizarreness kind of play out. It reminded me a little bit of um, The Lighthouse from a year mm. or two ago with... Um, also Robert, with Willem Dafoe. Robert, Eggers, yeah. Ro- Robert Pattinson. Willem yeah. Dafoe, yeah. It's just weird, <coughs> but it's wonderfully weird. And Yasti, you made your number two. It's my number two movie of the year. I think pound for pound, this is the most, this is what I've written. It's the most inventive, dazzling, risky, gorgeous film released in 2023. And nominally, I I know this is just like a gender reverse Frankenstein story, but no other film comes close, I think, in its daring, in its ingenuity, in its frankness, and in its willful embrace of the odd and the beautiful. It's, it's, it's just the whole thing is a delight. And I'll just say one other thing, which is that <laughs> and I and I wish this realization had come to me, but it did not. I've I've seen this now mentioned in a couple other reviews of the movie that this is the film Barbie should have been, right? If you're making a movie about an artificial, once lifelike, sorry, once lifeless, you know, woman, be it like Barbie the doll, or be it in this case somebody who gets literally reanimated, who comes to assert herself in the real world, then this is how you do it. I. I can't wait to see it again. I I was just in awe. And I, this is the issue when I compare this movie to every other movie that was released this year, they all seem so tame and they all seem like nobody's taking risks and nobody is really pushing cinema forward. And I think this movie does all of those. So I, I really liked it. It's my number two film. Yeah, unfortunately, this just didn't resonate know. with me at all. And I think it's one of those movies that I might have to see again because I have loved up until this point every Yorgos Lanthimos movie um, without, you know, without fail. So I don't know, maybe again, it, I was, it was the period when we were drinking from a fire hose. Maybe I was tired. Um but I just didn't connect with the central character at all. It, Mm. it, uh, I didn't, I I think she does a great performance because of what she has to do, but I didn't like, I didn't like my perception of her. And I think I said this during the podcast of her being taken advantage of by all of these men. And that, that Mm -hmm. part really upset me and bothered me a lot. Um, that when she's in a vulnerable state, She's she's almost eaten by, mm-hmm. figuratively and literally in some cases, but, but by all the men around her. Yeah, and and but that's it, a commentary too. It, correct. Sure, it is. I just didn't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I I didn't enjoy watching that, and I don't think it prevailed. I listened to another podcast, uh, Mark Commode, mm-hmm. um, Simon Mayo, and you know they described the movie as being very horny, and and the movie itself is. So I think. I understand the exploitation perspective, Rashmi, and that is exactly the commentary that the movie is is making there. But it's also the, the the central character here isn't being exploited in the sense of she this this is happening to her and around her. But you know she has uh, a, a place within. She's willingly doing it. Correct, correct, and. You know, yeah, there, if you get to thinking too deeply about yeah. what's actually happening here, it's it's abhorrent. And and I think Lanthimos knows that. Mm. And he's he's kind of needling us with it because that's what he does. Uh, and he clearly, you know, maybe crossed the threshold for you. Yeah. But I think that's kind of the point. Yeah. Yeah. And again, we've, we, I don't want to relitigate this. We've, we've <laughs> talked about this movie ad nauseum in our podcast. I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. Nothing would be more boring than if we all like the same movies and we all dislike the same movies. So this is what makes for great debate and I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, that's great. That's great. So my number three, and I'm, I'm uh, surprised surprised this isn't on your list, Yazdi, uh, and yours. Maybe it might be on Joe's. Uh, My number three is the movie The Zone of Interest, which was the movie that just came out, uh, written and directed by Jonathan Glazer. It's loosely based on a novel of the same name by um, uh, an author called Martin Amis. And it is a co-production between the United States, the United Kingdom and Poland. And it centers on uh, one of the commandants who actually existed called Rudolf Hoss and his wife, um, who were commandants at the Auschwitz um, concentration camp. And again, great performances. Sandra Huller's in this again. 
I would again nominate her for an, for an Oscar for this performance. I would nominate Christian Friedel for his performance as the commandant. I think this is such a different look. It's never comfortable watching a movie about the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. This is such a different movie about the Holocaust, and it it shocked me. It mm -hmm. it shook me, and it shocked me. Um, yeah, I, I, to say I love this movie is weird, but um, this has really stayed with me, and I can't stop thinking about it. It's on my honorable mentions. I may, maybe I haven't put it higher up because it's so difficult to think about and yeah. so unpleasant. Yeah. But I think what he's doing as a filmmaker is amazing. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, there are parts of the movie like we discussed this when when we discussed yes, when we did exactly. the full review we did of the full movie review, where yes. there is this almost uh, flipped negative version yes. which you see of this girl who's trying to help out. At the concentration camp, there's a lot of, you know, formal things that this this is an amazing director, Jonathan Glazer. Yes. He's made only like five movies; they're all remarkable. So yeah, I mean, it's it has it's one of this tremendous, uh, yes, tremendous uh, accomplishment for sure. Yes, and one of the best sound. I don't mm -hmm. notice sound, sound design. Yeah, best sound design of any movie I, I've seen this year. Only reason it isn't in my top 10 is because clearly I'm looking at my list of letterboxed entries for 2023 and I didn't you rate it. Oh, Joe. And so I, I know it would have fallen somewhere within the top 10 yeah. here and just based on score alone. I yeah. agree with everything you've said about yeah. it. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful. And Very it's the only movie Holocaust well. movie I've watched that does not show the Holocaust itself, but you know exactly what's going on. Okay, number twos. Uh, Yazdi, we know Poor Things is your number two. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, what is your number two? Um, this is one I know is definitely not in your top two, but I'm, I'm going to stand by my entry here. I'm really proud of it too. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. It's my number 20. It's <laughs> my... I'm going to... It's, it's my one. number 18. Okay, the reason it's so high up on my list is because this is one of the most giddily entertaining yeah. Yeah. and exciting movies that I can remember seeing in recent years. Um, nothing about this movie is lazy or phoned in. Nope. They went out and they set out to entertain the pants off the audience members. We saw it, I believe we saw it in IMAX. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just can't get over how from the very beginning to the very end of this movie, um, it is balls to the wall action and entertainment. It's clever. It's it's innovative, and maybe it's not particularly original, um, but it it's just it's so full force entertaining that it's been one of my favorite movies all year, and I'm so delighted to kind of see it as you know. It's one of the two movies that I gave five stars to. I'm sick to my bones of action movies which just are churning it, right? They're doing the action for the sake of action, thinking that if they're loud and if they're bombastic and enough, if enough things explode, then people will be thrilled and, you know, they will make, make a run to the bank with the money. We're looking at you fast and furious. <laughs> yeah. Um, but everything about this movie is so clever and well thought out. And there is not a single action. It, it goes from action piece to action piece. There is not a single action piece that doesn't have some cleverness about it mm -hmm. and some giddiness about it mm -hmm. and uh, you know at this point in a franchise we should be exhausted fast yep. and furious we are looking at you again <laughs> but we are not they just keep you know th can you th the level of difficulty is so high what else has the Mission Impossible franchise not done already and yet this is just part one there's going to be a part two coming yep. out in 2024 yes. so but all, all power to them fully self-contained mm -hmm. the part yes. one had me kind of ugh, almost crossing my arms with the, oh, this is going to be so dissatisfying. We're going to have to wait for a part two. Um, it is a fully self-contained movie. I don't know why they called it part one. I guess there is the, the, the obvious kind of... Because there is a part, part two. Part two that's coming. But I mean, it, it's fully, it's, it's satisfying. Like mm -hmm. when, when, it, when the credits rolled, I wasn't like, dang it. Um, yeah. you know, where, In where fact, you need a break because it's so action-packed and there's so much story that you actually need a, a, a long intermission. So props to the director, cast, crew, Tom Cruise, um, who is yeah. just just nailing it this at the moment. I mean, I, I have my 
problems with him. Um, but, you know, Top Gun Maverick from a year or two ago. It was great. It was fantastic. Yeah, it was great. This one, he's, he's just, he works so hard. <laughs> yeah. And it shows and, you know, yes, you know, he's Tom Cruise. He gets to do all this. But there's a, st- a stunt, it in. He there's never a stunt it where in, he yeah. jumps off a cliff on a motorbike. Yeah. And, you know, it's shot from like 10 different angles. I learned in one of the making of documentaries. Yes. He didn't just do that stunt once where you jump off a cliff on a motorbike and then parachute down. He shot, he did like that take eight, eight times or yeah. nine times. Like talk <coughs> about putting your life on the line for the sake of your art. I mean, I know that there's safety and stunt men and, uh, you know, but that's not lazy at, in, in, at, by any definition. Um, you know, stunning, stunning stuff. I've I've run into a few people who were like, eh, it's okay. There was nothing special. I've liked oh my other. Goodness. I've they liked need a other. Slap. I've liked other Mission Impossible movies better, and it's fine. You feel what you feel. That's okay. I think it's just that this franchise has created such a high bar for itself. Yes. That the fourth time somebody gives you caviar, you're like, oh yeah, I've had caviar before. Yeah. But the fact is, it is goddamn caviar. You're, it's not a burger that every other movie is offering you. So you kind yeah. of almost take this for granted, which we should but not. To that point, this is caviar that improves each time, yeah. and you're kind of you're left puzzled as to how how, how can how it be could so it be good? Better? Because yeah. You know, yeah, the the primacy effect of of having something yeah. twice in a row, yeah. Okay, so Yasi, your number two is Poor Things. My number two is the movie Fallen Leaves, which is, Mm -hmm. um, it's a Finnish German romantic comedy drama film. Uh, It's written and directed by a gentleman called Aki Korismaki, uh, who I'd never heard of before, but he's done apparently a ton of work. Check out all his stuff. There's all like this. This is such, this this film premiered at the Cannes Film Festival and actually won the, it it competed in the Palme d'Or and it won the jury prize. And my God, it's so deserving. This film is so special. This is a total Rashmi movie. It's quirky. It's funny. It's, um, it's deep and meaningful. It's got a lot to say. It's about two really interesting characters. Um, and it's about people who need each other that don't know they need each other. Um, this is a fantastic movie. I can't stop thinking about this one. Did you watch it, Yazdi? I watched it on my computer screen as part of the screeners we got. And you guys are planning to go watch uh, The Boy and the Heron, Heron tomorrow yes. with the holiday I'm planning to go watch this on the big screen yes. at the digital gym because it, yes, I so it is endeared, on the digital gym in it's uh, so San Diego. It so endeared itself to me that I want the full out experience. Oh. And, and you know, these are... Gems. She doesn't look like Julia Roberts. He doesn't look like George no. Clooney. They are everyday people. Correct. But it's, there is a whimsy about it and there is a sweetness about Alma it. Alma Poisty and, and Juicy Vatanen. They're their rough, it's a little bit rough around the edges, but it's... Yeah, it's lovely. This is such a good movie. Joe, you didn't get to watch this one. This is this is what I want movies to be. Yeah. Just delightful. Yeah. Based in Helsinki. I felt like I'd been on vacation too. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. the nice thing about these these foreign movies. So okay, Joe, I am so excited to think because Oppenheimer's I know which one is Oppenheimer's number one. <laughs> at number eight, seven, number seven, what is at number one? Because you know ours is past lives. So what is your number one, Joe? Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Ah, um, which is my so number this 16. This is the second movie. It's my number 12. On my list that got a five out of five stars on Letterboxd. And yes, that was my exit the theatre kind of sentiment. You know, I try and when I do remember to do my letterbox, it's usually as I'm walking from the the you know the credits are rolling and then walking to the car um but this still remains up there in terms of fully deserving its five out of five rating from me this is they did the impossible thing in this movie we're talking about um, that Mission Impossible kind of upping the ante, and this is also a part one of a, of two parts. Yeah, now and that that's that's the one failing. I'll, I'll I'll save this movie, but it does the thing of it took what came before, which was spectacular, surprising. You know, we were like oh, another Spider Man movie, yes, and we went correct. into we were like oh, grown. Um, into the Spider Verse yes. with you know kind of you know here we go, just another Spider Man, another Spider Man, and we came out of that just. You know, genuinely like um, 
thrilled with what we'd seen. This did the impossible thing of taking that very high bar and not just exceeding it, but absolutely smashing it to smithereens. I mean, this is so much more than Into the Spider-Verse, which itself is a fantastic accomplishment of a movie that I'm getting goosebumps just kind of talking about how much was crammed and done artistically, um, storytelling. Um, Animation-wise, too. Yeah, Techniques. Uh, the artistic yeah. l- level of... Uh, we, we talked about it in the review, and yes, I remember, you, I think you made the point that, you know, um, any frame of this movie could be, be kind framed, of yes. freeze-framed totally. and put on your wall as Correct. Like the, one of the best piece of art, yeah. pieces of art that you have in your house. Um, the constantly changing animation styles, sometimes used to represent different multiverses, but sometimes just, um, you know, done as a kind of an artistic styling thing. This this movie blew me away, continues to blow me away. Um, it, it, it is annoying in that it did the crime of being the middle movie in a trilogy and leaving us on a hell of a cliffhanger. But nonetheless... Um, this is just a fantastic movie. And again, to see it at the top of my list is a little surprising because it's, it's so, it, it, it's subject matter isn't cerebral or, or high art or, but the movie itself is all of those things. Yeah. Um, this is so difficult to do what they've done. Um, there's been a lot of controversy about the conditions under which this movie was finalized. Um, the the filmmakers have come under some criticism yeah. for kind of doing the video game crunch time where they pushed people beyond breaking point to try and get the movie to make its deadline because of the technical demands of the animation style. Everything was done the hard way. There's the, This isn't kind of, you know, we'll just program a computer and we'll, we'll, we'll do some sweeping camera moves. Everything here is hand-drawn albeit in a digital way um and so you know I'll, I'll kind of leave that there but the the end result was the, the juice was worth the squeeze i i freaking loved this movie yeah um i i think there are several levels at which this movie is exceptional like you said um just how much it's playing it's playing with the whole art of Animation. I mean, there's like, I don't know, six, seven, eight different kinds of animation that's playing in, in the movie, like visually. But even as a script, you know, it, it finds the time to comment on, you know, the whole multiverse is kind of overused now. People, every, every kind of superhero kind of, kind of uses it. But this was the first movie which made the case that if you're not fitting in as a human being, maybe you're just not in the right multiverse, right? So I, I just love verse. that. Verse. You're not the in the right, right verse, I right guess. Yeah, yeah. I love that analogy and I love yes. that in a movie that is so frenetic and that's moving so quickly and a hundred things are happening at the same time and there's 20 different Spider-Mans. It finds the time to build this very heartful story about, you know, a kid and his mom or a kid and his parents to be clear. Yeah. So there's a lot of things this movie is doing yeah. very, very well. I'm torn. I don't know. I mean, the boy and the heron is is legitimate art. Spider Man across the Spider Verse is legitimate art as well. They're both, you know, at the peak of their form. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That brings us to an end from one to from ten to one. Uh, Yazdi, why don't you read out your next ten in the order eleven through twenty? Okay. So my eleventh is a movie called Infinity Pool which is on Hulu. It's the best horror movie I've seen. It's 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 actually a disservice to call it horror because it's just creative. It's mm. fun. I think you should watch it. You will love it. I know. You keep telling me. Number It's on Hulu. Another reason to get Hulu. Number 12 was Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Number 13 was Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret, which was on your list. Uh, number 14 was Rylane. Uh, and number 15 was You Hurt My Feelings, the Julia Louis-Dreyfus oh, yep. movie. Very that cute movie. Yes. I, I have so much love for Number 16 was the Indian movie Polite Society, which is on Amazon Prime, which I have a lot of fondness for. Number 17 is a movie I just saw a couple of days ago called A Fire, Mm -hmm. which is also available on Amazon Prime. Number 18 was Air, the movie on Mm. Netflix about Nike, which everybody should watch. It's such a crowd pleaser. Number 19 is the excessive 
overcooked salt burn, which I still like, and it's playing on Amazon Prime. Ooh. And number 20 was Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Okay, Joe, while you get yourself ready, because I know you're probably not ready, I will read my next um, 10 from 11 through 20. Okay. Um, I also have Polite Society as number 11, Yazdi. <clears throat> I have the great horror movie called Talk To Me as number 12. And that was my <clears throat> number 21. Oh. But yes, I love um, Talk To number Me. Number 13 is American Fiction. Yes. Um, I am glad that um, Jeffrey Wright is getting some love. Yes. My number 14 is also Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. Number 15 for me is Saltburn, a little bit higher than uh, than yours there, Yazdi. Number 16, as I just said, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Joe, number 17, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, which I know you loved. <clears throat> number 17, that was. Number 18, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. Number 19, the movie Fair Play. That's also on my honorable list. Yeah, I love it was a that really movie. good movie. What a script. What, what a, a script, script and what a great um, uh, dialogue Concept. about what's going on in the working world today. Guys, then, it's playing on Netflix. Fair play. Watch it tonight. Yes. Not with your kids, but yes. watch it. Yes. yes. And my number 20 was Creed 3, if not yeah, just great. for the fantastic uh, wardrobe. wardrobe. <laughs> um, and Joe watched it finally as well. So that is my, that's my top 20 for 2023. Joe, are you ready to give us your next 20, your next, next 10? 10. Maybe Three, not. two, one. Yes, let's just <laughs> let's just do it. Um, so, I am already mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. Um, John Wick. Yes. Um, yes. Four, <laughs> four. Number four. No hard feelings and Guardians yes. of the Galaxy. No hard feelings. Um, also on Netflix. People watch it. Not with your fantastically kids. Fantastically entertaining movies. Fourteen is the zone of interest which I've inserted because I'm sure it would have been somewhere in there or even up there. Um, had I had I properly rated it um, as I meant to, um, w one mention, uh, one movie here that I don't think either of you mentioned is the documentary Still about yes, Michael J. Fox yes, and fantastic. his Parkinsonism. Oh. Uh, so it's the only documentary very actually good. on my list, but yeah, um, uh, just a, a a very very powerful um, movie about you know not just the man, but the you know and and his struggle with the disease, but you know lots of other. Um, kind of elements around who he is and, and how he came to be. Um, Air made it on my top 20 as well. Rashmi Creed. Um, yeah, that was just a crowd pleaser of a movie, but um, it, it's a hardworking it, movie. It's it a great movie. It, it did <laughs> absolutely beautifully. Um, I'm going to put The Holdovers, American Fiction, and Talk To Me on the list. Talk To Me has not on my list here, but it has displaced what would have been on my list otherwise, which was A Haunting in Venice, which mm. again, I don't think that, that necessarily worked for a lot of people, but um, yeah, as you far really as the Poirot movies work, that, yeah. was, that was super. So um, yeah, so many, so really many more Really good movies. I think this has been a great year for movies. So uh, I would have put, I would have put a movie <coughs> on my top 10. Uh, we saw it as part of the screeners. But it's not being released until uh, February the 8th. So I, I'm not going to put it in. It, it's going to be on my list next year. But okay. it's, it's, uh, it's, so France has gotten into a lot of trouble because it did not put Anatomy of a Fall as their submission for uh. 2024. And instead, they put this movie called The Taste of Things. With oh, yeah, Juliette yeah, yeah, Binoche. which you keep telling me about. Yeah. So, you know, people are really upset because if France had put it, it could have had so Don't much more momentum. Don't they keep doing this? Didn't they do this they with the color blue? It. Yeah, blue is the warmest blue color. Blue is the warmest color, yeah, not yeah, the color yeah, blue. Yeah. That's the color purple but, I'm thinking but of. But a taste of things is an amazement. But yeah. that movie, we'll, we'll talk about it when it gets released. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That brings us to the end of the podcast. That's right. Another it up. great year. You know, yes. yeah, actually, on balance. Um, I've very been making a list of all of ours, and then maybe, Joe, you can publish our. I'll sure, top yeah. tens. I have get them it ready. Up, I'll try and Done. put yeah. it online. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for listening to uh, what is that an hour? Like a ninety-minute-long podcast. Not bad. Um, not bad. There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, and there were a lot of great movies, and I think uh, I'm kind of pleased with with where we. We aligned on a lot of things this year. Yeah, we doesn't, did. It doesn't always happen. Yeah, I don't think Joe has as good taste as Yazdi and I, but that's okay. I, I won't I'm argue joking. that. No, <laughs> I actually, I won't argue that. I mean, I think, you know, I, I, I do veer towards the commercial blockbuster, but that, that is, 
my flavor movies are many things yeah, to many that's people true. as you said and so yeah and um, i think look just by nature of the 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 way it runs yes you know i just end up watching a lot more movies and so i think so you the, have your heads up your asses a, a little bit more a little yes. bit further <laughs> little little bit further up yeah all right on that note let's wrap up the podcast um thank you again for listening hopefully this youtube experiment works so you should find us on uh, youtube.com slash movie wallace um don't look at the other videos in that feed because uh, they're very old and um un- and probably Greek. equally unpolished i don't think we've gotten any better since no but we are younger looking so <laughs> we, we watch were. those <laughs> le- le- less, <laughs> we less. need some uh, airbrushing yes <laughs> yeah we'll have to come pick. on ai i was yeah. gonna say yeah the ai video version of the podcast but hopefully this did work uh movieoilers.com slash youtube do check it out like and subscribe i guess is the the, the term we should be saying um and this was all done for kids who said you do a podcast and we said yes they're like where can we find it on youtube i'm like who uh, watches podcasts on youtube it turns out the whole world does so i need to get with the program so that's what we're trying to do here all right until our next podcast too many movies too little time a goodbye from me and me and me as well